What's going on guys? Did you know that there's a protected butterfly habitat here on Mount Charleston? Here on Mount Charleston. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like my voice melts. Oh. oh dang, oh what the heck? Today is a special day. We have Vince, the buyer's agent for our real estate team. Ooh, a little puberty. Normally he's out working on Wednesday, but we stole him and he's gonna come hike Mount Charleston with us. Today's hike is a six mile loop. This one is on the easier side with only about 900 feet of elevation gain. The beginning of this path starts as an old road with some cool history. And the second half is walking through a peaceful forest that acts as a butterfly habitat. We're gonna talk more about both later on. There's an upper parking lot and a lower parking lot with about a mile of road connecting the two to create a loop. Today, we're starting at the lower parking lot. What's up guys, Sam here. Our recommendations for this hike is to bring at least two liters of water. Normal sneakers could work on this trail, but hiking shoes are always a plus. And make sure to check weather before heading up here. On this trail, you'll find ponderosa pine trees. If you see these big guys, take a whiff. They smell sweet like butterscotch. Oh yeah, they do. <laughs> You'll notice that the first two miles of the trail are basically like a dirt road and there's a reason for that. Back in 1940, the government was trying to create jobs and so they were gonna pave a road from here all the way through to Pahrump. In 1942, World War II started. Thanks a lot, Hitler. So they stopped and the rest of the trail is just like a normal hiking trail. About two and a half miles in, you'll have beautiful views of Lee Canyon. This is the closest place to snowboard and ski during the winter. The noise you're hearing is coming from a crackling forest grasshopper and it's the noise that it makes while it flies. About three and a half miles in, you'll find a sign about Mount Charleston's endangered butterflies. These butterflies are battling the drought, forest fires, invasive weeds, and off-trail hiking can trample their homes, eggs, and larvae. Make sure to watch where you step and stay on trail. At the end of this trail, near the upper Bristlecone parking lot, there's more info about the butterflies, the plants that they need to survive, and when you can see them flying around. All right, up until this point, it's kind of the wide road with the cool history. You end up coming up to like a, the most steep part of it. From here, we're gonna head in to more mountainous, more pine trees, aspens. It's always kind of a trip when you're walking on trail and you see one dead tree depending on another dead tree to not fall on the trail that you're walking on. This trail is fairly simple and if you're looking for a tougher Mount Charleston hike, check out our video on Griffith Peak. We'll link it in the YouTube description. After you pass the most steep part of the trail, it becomes much more single use. We start heading downhill, has some pretty cool rock formations back there. But overall, we never really head too far into actual Mount Charleston. You're kind of just staying on like the rim of it. So you constantly have views of Lee Canyon. How are you enjoying yourself? Very much enjoyment, much enjoyment, very nice. <laughs> What's the difficulty of the trail so far? Pretty chill. The elevation is so nice that you can't really tell that you're going up an elevation. It's like a steady just walk. Four-ish miles into the trail, we've now dropped down into the little canyon area. It's getting a little bit more forested, a little bit more dense. How do you like the hike so far? Weather's perfect, we've got good cloud coverage. It's not hot, it's what, 75 degrees, 80 yeah. degrees? Perfect. These aspen trees look so perfect, they almost look painted, so I had to touch it. But we're about to learn something new about aspen trees. Oh, oh dang, <laughs> oh, what the heck? Is it painted? Like we said it was painted. Mount Charleston, what are y'all out here painting these trees and make them look nice? <laughs> Do butterflies excrete something under the trees? <laughs> it could be, I don't know. I'm gonna have to look that up. I wonder why it's just the bark. Does anybody know why this happened? <laughs> 
After going home, we researched what this white powder was. The outer layer of aspen cells die and are shed in the form of white powder. Even more interesting, this powder contains enough natural yeast that people can bake with it. If you're hiking this during a summer weekend, Lee Canyon's Bar and Grill will be open from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Follow the signs near the end of the trail. A handrail? What kind of trail did you take me to? <laughs> Actually, Vince, this is a handrail designed to protect the butterflies. Do you have a problem with protecting the butterflies, the butterflies Vince? Butterflies can fly all they want. All right. <laughs> this is a pretty nice rail right here. Just finishing up with the trail. Now to connect us back to that lower parking lot, we have about a mile of road walking. There is a small shortcut. Once you hit the pavement, look for the helicopter landing sign. And right next to it, there's a trail that cuts the highway switchbacks. It's pretty steep and a ton of loose rocks though, so be prepared. We found a thread-waisted wasp. These guys sting and paralyze their prey, in this case a caterpillar, take it back to their nest, lay eggs in it, and then when the larvae hatch, they'll consume the caterpillar. Ugh, gross. Right as we were getting back to the lower parking lot, we found a white-lined sphinx moth, aka a hummingbird moth. It's a lot less scary than the wasps. These beautiful moths are three inches across. 